And the, the trouble too, and I know you've spoken about this too, when it comes to Kamala Harris, I mean, she's, she's got that, that huge block of voters, the black vote there, and you know, you'd have to think that they'd be very upset if Kamala Harris wasn't at the top of the ticket, right, Cam? That's right, and I think the other problem is going to be if they have an open contest, Pete, is that it won't actually be much of a contest because um, Gretchen Whitmer, the Michigan governor, who would have been one of the front runners, has already said she won't uh, challenge Harris. Uh, Gavin Newsom, the Californian government, who would be another front runner, has said previously that he won't challenge mm -hmm. Harris. So you might have, a, if you like, an open contest where there's not much of a contest because the danger for these candidates to come and now challenge Harris is that um, she's got a lot of powerful backing with Biden's support, Clinton's support, a lot of donors. And if it all went belly up and there were divisions because of that challenge, they would bear the blame. So it's a very risky path for someone to actually challenge Kamala Harris at this minute, I think. Yeah, I mean, and the, uh, the cynics would probably argue too that, you know, they might want, not want to join the ticket because they might want to keep their powder dry for four more years thinking, well... We don't have a chance. The momentum around Donald Trump is just too strong. There's too much negativity around Kamala Harris. There's the border failures. There's that. The story is about very high staff turnover pointing to, you know, possibly fractured scenes behind the scenes as well. So perhaps they think, well, you know what? Let's just leave it for four years. Well, that's right, because, I mean, there's just three months to go. It's enormous effort. Whoever is the Democratic candidate just has three months to defeat Donald Trump. He is well organised. He's obviously on a high after his convention and the assassination attempt. Uh, you know, it's a massive challenge for any Democrat challenger to actually win at this minute. And yeah. some of the candidates, the other candidates, may look, we'll let Kamala um, go for it and perhaps take the fall yeah. and then we can be clean skins and in four years' time when there isn't a Trump running against them. Yeah, that's true. Do you, do you have a hunch on who she... she if, if it is her, who she might go with as a VP? No. Uh, there's It's an enormous uh, range of choices she has. It's interesting. I wonder whether she's even um, considered it mm. greatly at this point in time. But I think um, that we are probably likely even if there's an open contest, Pete, to see Kamala as the um, as the, the candidate, I think it would yeah. be very unlikely that someone would actually topple her and beat her. I think that's what we're looking at. While we're going to be talking about this for days ahead, uh, I think the ultimate outcome may well be that she is the candidate. Yeah, I mean, uh, when's the last time there was an open, there was an, um, an open process at a, at a convention? And we we're going back to the 60s, aren't we, Cam? Yeah, we're looking at 68, I think. Yeah. And, yeah. and there's never been a situation where a presidential candidate has, has bowed out this late in the piece. I mean, this yeah. is completely an ugly new territory. And the thing uh, for Donald Trump, this is a challenge for Trump too, because uh, he was very confident of beating Joe Biden. Uh, he's also probably reasonably confident of perhaps beating if it's, if it's Kamala Harris, but he just doesn't know that. He was much more mm. confident, I think, of beating Biden than Harris, and that's the real unknown. I mean, this is a generational tra change for the Democrats. They've rolled the, rolled the dice. It's a big gamble. Yeah. But from their point of view, it's not such a big gamble because they were going to lose anyway with Biden. I know you got your own um, deadlines, Cam, but I just want to close on this thought. I mean, already you've seen the, the attack ads now, um, vicious ones that have started from uh, the Republican Party already going after Kamala Harris, but you've also had it from Speaker Johnson this morning, and J.D. Vance already referred to this at the uh, convention last week, that they, that they don't think it's acceptable that Joe Biden sticks around until November. They want him gone now. What are the chances of that? I think that zero chance of that, um, unless he had an accident or something like that. Uh, I think Joe Biden, he would see this as such an indignity to have to pull out of this candidacy at this point in time. I think he would say, I'll do that one for the party. I won't mm. do the other one. I'm going to stay as uh, as president. No, I think he's definitely going to stay. And what the uh, Republicans will do is they will try and align their attacks on Kamala Harris completely with Joe Biden and say, she is a mini-me of Joe Biden. So if you elect her, you'll get another Joe Biden. That, that'll be their argument. Mm, OK. Cameron Stewart uh, from the Australian Chief International Correspondent and all of Cameron Stewart's great work is there online, folks, uh, and on the paper too. It's worth reading, as always. Cam, thank you. We'll talk to you again soon.